that's the emergency fund. Now, let's talk about taxes. Now, it says right here, do the average American traditionally owe or do they get a tax refund each year? What do y'all think? Well, I don't know. That's why we have a tax expert with us that's going to share this information with you. And what I want you to do, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to really pay attention because the secret to keeping your money in America is understanding the tax laws. I know they're boring. I don't want to sit down and learn that mess. But guess what? If you make time to learn it, you'll go, you can do what? I didn't know you could do that. I go, I know, that's why you broke. You didn't know that. But now that you know that, we can help you. So without a further ado, I would like for you all to give your full attention to our tax expert, Mr. James T. Chatler. Y'all give him a hand. <laughs> I'm grateful for the opportunity because we got a short time. All my teammates say, uh, uh, I got to make sure I stay on schedule. And I'm going to try to be as serious as possible, but that's usually not my personality. Well, that thing, uh, you can't be just <laughs> <laughs> Who the two teams, who we beat twice? One. We ain't paid second time. All right. So, I, I own two companies. One of them had to be Bob Taxi. So, when we ask this question, do we do people normally owe or get a refund? And I got to try to stay still because we... Mm. <laughs> mm. Can y'all see how uncomfortable this is for me to try to stay still like this? All right, well, let me ask you a question though. What's the ask question? Do people owe or do people get a refund in this country? Refund. Yeah, well, we think that, but actually, the average American get a refund. You just showed me when you got up here, didn't you, Stro? There we go. I got it. All right, and we're gonna put up a list of expenses. If I don't have enough time, we're not gonna go through all of them. But I'm going to just talk about a few. So when folks says have an average tax return, I'm talking about average American, how many of these things they can normally write off on their taxes? And because the answer's already on the board, wasn't it? Y'all yeah. skip to the bottom. Did y'all see that said none at the bottom right there, the big X on it? All right, but let me go to this real quick. So somebody that's working a job, and don't get, me, don't get us wrong, guys, we're not knocking a job. We're just saying it's plan A. You might need plan B, C, and D to make it through in this American life. Are we with me? All right, but let's talk about it real quick. Do people who work a job go from point A to point B to work 40 years out of life, do they have car and truck expenses? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they, folks don't drive a car to work? Yeah. So they have it. But it doesn't, the, the, the boys said don't show up on their taxes. Are y'all with me? All right, let's keep on going. The folks who work a job, barely make it, do they eat out meals and entertainment? You know, broke folks don't have fun. We, we, we gonna have fun, all right? Do y'all think I need a microphone? Yes. Okay. Huh. Now I can't even move. Test it. That sound better? Yeah. All right. Now we're going to skip way just because we're going to talk about it a little bit today. In the, the folks who work a job, do they have things that depreciate? That's depreciation. Yeah. If y'all don't know what depreciation is, because I don't want to use legalese for you, if you ever bought something, it depreciates. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Let's go down to the next one. We're going to skip business interest. Let's go down to communications. Do anybody in this room don't have a cell phone? Do it show up on your taxes? The answer is like this. Okay? So do we travel? Those who just work a job, do they travel? Yeah. Well, so what's the number one place we're going to go? To the beach. To the beach? We're going to go. All right? So let's talk about how we can transform this terminology to your benefit. Are y'all with me? So we're only going to talk about a few. Because I ain't got that much time. And, then, and I'm going to tell you when my time starts, too. All right? All right? I like that young lady, how she was speaking for the scriptures for you. Uh, if she can see this from back in the room, I would love for her to read this part for me. Can you see that from the back of the room? All right. All right? Go ahead. Read many it. people, many people in home-based businesses, I need to get over here. <laughs> Many people in home-based businesses can honestly and legit legitimately 
they dug 3,000 to 5,000 or more, of th I'm sorry, for 3,000 or $5,000 more or more per year for using their personal vehicles for business purposes. Keeping a 90 day log once a year, showing the date, destination, primary purpose, and miles traveled for each use are the only records most people need to keep. Thank you, thank you. Y'all give a round of applause. All right. And I, I won't paraphrase. If you operate a business from your home and you transfer using your vehicle for business as well as going to work, and you keep that documentation just for 90 days. How long was 90 days? Three months. Three months. How many months? How many months in a year? Wow. It's 90 days. Three months worth of discipline. You keep that documentation. Proving that you was conducting business, they will allow you to duck the mileage off your vehicle. Let's give you some examples. Our example here, we got a, a family or individual making $60,000 a year. Is that pretty decent income? Yes. Okay income? Yes. All right. Do we believe people making it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we believe people making less than that? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to keep on talking. In the red, we got over here 20,000 miles. It's 20,000 miles. I don't want you to over-exaggerate stuff so I'll make my presentation seem all good. It's 20,000 miles, too much miles in a year. No. No? Good. All right? If you drove that, and you can prove we did that for business, the IRS, I want to slow down, the IRS allow you to subtract, deduct, take away, minus, get off your income, on your taxes, 57 and a half cents a mile. All right, let me do that again. 57 and a half cents a mile. So if you say this is too much, I don't want to do nothing for myself, I don't want a business, so every time you drive two miles in your vehicle, we'll even here today, throw a dollar out your window. <laughs> just, just keep on going. Alright? So if we subtract, and then the math case and the math says eleven thousand five hundred that that person can subtract from their income. They made sixty. They was able to subtract, not a refund. They was able to subtract from getting taxes the eleven thousand five hundred. So now their taxable income is only forty eight five. Let me ask y'all a question before I sit down. If you had the choice. Would you want to pay taxes on sixty thousand, or would you want to pay taxes on forty-eight? Forty-eight. Oh, so y'all do understand that then? You see my point? If you had the choice, you'd rather pay less taxes. So I get this question all the time. I haven't went there in a lot. They, we, some folks believe that wealthy should pay more taxes. If it was your money. I'm done now. Come on with it. You want to pay less taxes also? Are you with me? See, our goal is when we want to help folks become wealthy, we want you better make a million dollars but pay taxes on 200000 Who with that? Yeah. All right. You have the right to avoid paying taxes. You don't have the right to evade. Uh -huh. So we're going to teach you how what I like to call to my clients playing the game. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right. We're going to take one deduction now. I got a book up here. I got a book. And the title of this book is I Can't Move. <laughs> it's called 475 Tax Deductions for... Businesses and self-employed individuals. Unfortunately, it don't say anything about W-2. When I say W-2, I mean folks who just work a job only. There's no, there's no conversation about W-2. For businesses and self-employed, that's 475. We don't win over one, and we already saved eleven thousand mm. dollars. So I got 474 that more to go. Y'all just sit tight. We're gonna finish it today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now here's the explanation. So if I got some folks who's real studious and want to catch me up, here's the publication that you can find at the website called rs.gov. All right. Did y'all see that little picture of that home that's on there? Yeah. All right. If you go straight across, don't read the red circle just yet. Just go straight across. You should see a desk, and that desk says what? Regular main job. That's when you go to work. That's when you are commuting. Now read that red circle. How long? How, how many miles can you ride off going just to work? Never. never. How long is never? Never. 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 Ever. Never. 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 While you work a job, you can write it off. Are y'all with me? How many years people normally work a job? They got a good job, so they can retire from it. Forty some years. Yeah. Fifty some years. Yeah. Won't get the same job. That means you throw all those money. That means folks called out because you was a good employee. You went back to work just because you and you just left. You grabbed the sandwich, went back. You can still never write off those miles. 
All right, let's change the terminology, guys. Y'all see that little circle right there? That's called a temporary work location. If we don't know the temporary work location, I'm going to give you the secret right now. I want you guys to write it down. It's real sophisticated. These are temporary work locations. Are you ready? Uh -huh. Gas station, Walmart, Kmart, Sears, movie theaters, Burger King, Arby's, McDonald's, <laughs> Starbucks. All those places are temporary work locations. You know why? Because you don't normally work there. Now, if you work at one of the places I just mentioned, Go to the other ones. <laughs> so, but you normally go to those places on a regular basis. Are you with me? No. Uh, if you're in business, your goal, and so, so I got some legal reason, your goal is and your intent is to create a profit. Did y'all hear me? No. To be in business, your goal and intent is to create a profit. You must have the intent. I ain't say you got to have one. You ain't got to make it, but you got to have the intent. And your goal is to be collecting new clientele for your business. Are you with me? So when you go to McDonald's, are you the only person in McDonald's when you go get your food? No, no. no it's like this. It's either somebody ringing up your food, right? No. Talk to them. Excuse me, would you like to save 11500 on your taxes? And wait for the answer. If they say no, get your food and run. <laughs> Give them some information. Great, I can't talk to you while you're on somebody else's time, but let me get your number and I'll talk to you later. As soon as you do that, you just created a temporary work location. Are you with me? Okay. All right. So let's keep on going. I'm going to show you this. I'm going to wrap it up real quick. So if you go from your home to a temporary work location, back to your job, so I ain't say go quick tomorrow, what does that little circle say now in the blue? Always. How long is always? Always. Always while you in business. So here's my point. Let's say if somebody got one of them places real close to your job. Anybody got one of them places real close to where you're working right now? Yeah. Real close, right? Mm -hmm. I want it on the same sidewalk. <laughs> so where you go now once you said yes to business? Do you go straight to work? No. No, it's like this. You go straight to Starbucks. Uh -huh. Have an intent to create a profit. Mm -hmm. And then walk down the sidewalk to go to your job. And that just never just became an always deduction. Come, come on. Can, can y'all see that? Yeah. All right. Let's talk about number two now. This is the most misunderstood one right here. Most folks don't understand this exists. Whether you've got kids or you don't have kids. Would you mind helping me out again? Okay. Now, I want to make sure y'all get it. We don't talk about two. This is my second one. If you have a minor child or children at least six years old and employ him, her, them in your home-based business, A, they are not subject to child labor laws, B, no payroll withholding is required if they're under 16, 18, excuse me. C, the wages you pay them are 100% tax deductible to you as a business expense. And D, the income they earn is 100% tax free. That's as good as it gets. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, now, now if y'all understand what she said, she said if you had children, <laughs> Then they over two children, it's children. <laughs> Alright, you got one and a half, that's, a, that's, that's children. So we're talking about children. Alright? And they'd be at least at the age of six. Now, me and Stro, we broke this rule. Now, my son and my daughters are working with me since they were three and five. If you employ them from a home based business, they're not subject to child labor law, but you know they got to be about 16 to work, right? Are y'all with me? That, that don't exist when you're making your own rules. So government said, when you get into ownership, we give you some leeway. Are y'all with me so far? Uh -huh. All right. So you can pay them. Now, what I mean by paying them, most parents pay their kids now. What is it called? Allowance. Allowance. We're going to do the exact same thing, but change the terminology. You give them money. It's their allowance. And what they usually do for their allowance? Work. They around the house? Yeah. Clean their room up? Yeah. You know what the IRS call that? Domestic work. If you don't believe me, we can look at the code. If you had them do domestic work around the house while they're in business, while you're in business, and your business is at their home, so if their home is your office, their domestic work is cleaning what? Office. Uh -oh. <laughs> so now we pay them. We don't give them allowance. We pay them. Now, if you take care of your children, you normally buy them clothes, you normally feed them. See, I feed my kids every other day. So they, they know we straight home. We put clothes on them when folks don't see them. But we pay for that, right? Now, if anybody who did tax return, do shoes show up on a tax return? No. Shoes, clothes, no. Xbox, no. cheerleading outfits, no. cheerleading outfits, no. cheerleading outfits. 
If y'all ain't noticed, I got twin girls. That's just two of them, but I had three teams. They three chili now, fits. the third one? Because one of them was on two teams. <laughs> But ask me that I pay for those chili that I fit. Go ahead and ask me that I pay for those. Did you pay for the I paid wages. Oh, okay. See, I'm teaching my children how to say the way they should go. So I do the same things most employers do. If you're working a job, if you're working a job right now, you take that money, you pay your house payment, you pay your life bill, you pay your car payment, you pay your insurance, and your job is right there completely off. They just call it what Show talked about this morning, a PC, a paycheck. So I'm bringing the same skill sets home, so I cut them a wage when they do work for me. And when they got their money, they're going to pay for the stuff I was paying for. Come on. Yes. So when they want the nice shoes, who pay for them? They do. They spent their money. I wrote off wages. The law says you can write up a $6,100 per child. And that's actually going to go up per child. This is not earning with credit. This is going to stop the two. If you got five, you got five times 6100 The catch is we got to pay them. Let's assume this example that we pay them. We got 11,000 we took off the mileage. We got two children in this example. Two children times 6,100, that's $12,200 that you pay your kid. You pay them. Because there's money you're going to spend anyway. Do we spend more than 6,000 on our children a year? Yes. All we're asking about is 6,100. 6, that's all you, and your taxable income at this point is $36,000. With two deductions, I said four to seven five. Just with two, we all we wrote off close to half of this individual's income. So you see what a stereotype that the wealthy stay wealthy? Because uh -huh. we're gonna they're gonna figure out a way. Right. All right? Two. Now, as we get all these deductions, that's great, guys. Great role models back home. But we also gotta give you a method of keeping. And we got a software in our system that we're gonna talk about a little later, doing your smartphone, tablet, computer. Uh, you your expenses and your income, and you can actually take a picture. And when you put it in there, the system looks like this. This is what my daughters are hired to do. They keep up with my receipts. You name who, what, when, where, and why. You click it, keep track of your mileage. And it looks just like this on a web-based system, so they stuck to your computer. You can do it while you're on a, on a vacation, on a yacht. Keep track of your expenses. All right? So it's good for you to keep up with your numbers. All right? So I'm going to ask you a question as I sit down. Can we do this? Yes. 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 yes, we can, all right? The bottom line is we have an organized way to take all those things that people, y'all ever seen those guys? Now, some of y'all I know do taxes. You ever have a client walking in with all them doggone receipts in a box and, a, and, a, and they expect you to go through all that stuff and figure it all out? Technically, you're supposed to enter that receipt into something within a certain time period because receipts do what? Fade and all that good stuff. Well, if you have your children, and mine can tell you, uh, they used to think it was fun. Dad, you got some more stuff to put in the computer? And as they got older, they're like, you got some more of them doggone receipts? But they would put them in the system and that's how we would pay them, and then you make that tax deductible. Is everybody clear? Yes. But the key to making that work is you have to have a what? Business. 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 So we don't apologize for telling you the truth. If you live in America and you don't have a business, just give all your money to the IRS. Okay, and they'll take it. But if you have a business, you can exercise the rules of the game Right off your travel, right off your vacation, all that stuff is legal if you have a what? A business. And we're going to show you how to keep that simple so you won't have to think you have to go back to school, get a degree in finance to have a business because you don't. I only told people that. Actually, spend more money. All right, let's give them another hand, y'all. This is James and Daniel.